I coordinate uh, ADB's procurement work in the transport sector. Um, I hope the energy levels are still keeping up. Uh, one last session to go, and then networking cocktails. So, uh, you know, just uh, keep it going for one more hour. Okay, so today we're going to talk about portfolio um, and what is the pipeline of transport projects over the coming years. I have uh, four gentlemen here who will be speaking to you on that specific topic. Um, as I introduce them yeah. from left to right, as I'm facing you. Well, uh, left to right, first of all, we have uh, Tsunayuki Sakai, who is the unit head for project administration for the Pacific Department. He will open the discussion and will then um, uh, also cover the Pacific. Uh, we have uh, Masahiro Nishimura, who is the similar position for our Central, West, and East Asia department. We have uh, Shigehiko Muramoto, Muramoto, who covers South Asia, and Vitun Tawasok, who covers CERD. Apologies, gentlemen, for the pronunciations. All right, so generally we will have 10 minutes uh, presentation from each. That should take 40 minutes in total, uh, if they can get through the slide decks uh, in, in time. And then we'll have about 20 minutes for any questions that you have from the floor, and I'll moderate that session. We will keep all the questions until the end, and then we will keep going for as long as we have the time available uh, before the networking cocktails kick off at 5.15 p.m. Manila time. So with that, I will stop talking, and I will hand the floor to Sakai-san to start his presentation. So, so you just, you ah, okay, okay. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for gathering today uh, in this transport sector session. I'm Tsune Yuki Sakai, Unit Head Project Administration in the Transport Sector Office Sector Group. I'm in charge of this uh, uh, overall uh, Sector, uh, sector overview, and also uh, later I will present on the Pacific cooperation. Okay, so I, I will start from the vision of our transport sector. As a regional climate bank, ADB is taking action to achieve $100 billion cumulative uh, climate financing by 2030. Now you may have heard in the previous sessions. And transport sector handles the largest portfolio in ADB and we are working to increase climate financing through our support to sustainable transport sector development in our development, uh, developing member countries by uh, mobilizing efficient, clean, and rigid. As of last month, transport sector has about 33 billion active loan grant and the TA portfolio. Uh, this represents about 30% of total ADB portfolio, and 60% of our portfolio are concentrated in five countries, India, Philippines, Vietnam, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. This slide shows a little bit different picture. While Pacific region, uh, in the previous slide, represent only 5% in dollar valued, it represents about 15% in number of the project. This indicates a number of smaller size projects in the Pacific, where small island countries and fragile and conflict-affected states are concentrated. So we need to structure a supporting mechanism for the project preparation and also during implementation to ensure project quality, which could be unique to these regions. Climate uh, change shift. As I explained earlier, and the ADB target to achieve $100 billion cumulative finan climate financing by 2030. And this slide shows uh, the contribution of transport sector to this target. The pie chart 
here shows we are making gradual shift in subsectors, moving more toward the railway. Between uh, in, in the year 2000 and 2000, 2023, and uh, I just showed that the interim figure in the decade in 2000, last decade in 2010 to 2019, the approval amount of road project were about 63% only. This is down from 80% in the previous decade. So now uh, this resulted in the shift in the subsector balance. And uh, actually, the cumulative co uh, crime financing amount in the last year doubled up. And the cumulative, uh, cumulative crime uh, transport sector strategy. And uh, as our effort to realize the development impact area through our project, we put increasing focus on the project readiness at entry. Conventionally, as you uh, know, that the procurement of consulting services for detailed engineering design or work and equipment contracts started uh, mainly after our project approval, but we have been promoting procurement activity to take place in advance to ADB's approval of investment project. And we call it advanced contracting and we have the tool to support this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, advanced contracting, and we are encouraging our client to use the project readiness financing, or we call it PRA. In the past, we had a similar scheme, which is called the TA loan or TA grant, and uh, this scheme will support the various project preparation activities, including feasibility study, and also detailed engineering design and the bidding document, and also uh, pilot testing of some project design. And with, with this uh, effort, uh, uh, we uh, achieved a kind of a higher percentage of contracted amount in our portfolio, uh, which will expect the loan grant disbursement to accelerate the project in completion. Out of 33 billion of our portfolio, about three quarter or 75% of our portfolio have already been contracted, and uh, about nine billion remain for future contract or the variation to the existing contract. <coughs> and undisbursed amount is about 17 billion, including about eight billion to be disbursed from the ongoing contract. From this data, I would like to highlight the business opportunities are moving to upstream of project cycle. This is a shift from the past when most procurement opportunity became open after ADB approval of investment project. We are continuing our dialogue with our client to have more contract awarded before ADB approval of investment project to expedite project implementation and to realize a developed impact area. This slide shows uh, kind of the key focus area. To enhance our support in this area, we have created three practice teams in this uh, new operation model. One is a railway and logistic team, and the second is a smart mobility team, and emergency, emerging, emerging area team. These teams will work on all regions without boundary to share good practice and lessons across ADB member country. In addition to these three teams, we have the re two regional teams. One is covering the East Asia, Central Asia, and Pacific. The other is covering South Asia and Southeast Asia. And this is a... Uh, Yes, uh, in of the sum of emergency opportunities uh, that we would like to increase our involvement. And we have limited in-house expertises in these evolving areas currently, and we need cutting edge knowledge and innovative ideas and expertise from front runners of industry in designing our uh, project. We appreciate your experiences and ideas. 
Okay, this is the end of my presentation. And uh, in today's session, our colleague use in the each region focal, or we will make the presentation on each regional focus and key opportunities. Thank you very much for listening, and we are looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Okay, for those who have just joined, this is the transport uh, pipeline discussions. There was a change in venue, just in case anyone is expecting us to discuss health. Health is next door. Uh, we will have 10 minutes presentations, then followed by Q&A. Uh, and uh, as always, presentations will be shared with all delegates uh, in case, uh, after the event. So uh, over to you, Masai. Thank you, Kevin. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Masa Nishimura, uh, representing the Central West and East Asia region for transport. So Central West and East Asia regions, we cover that very diverse 12 countries. As you can see, those A, B, C, these are not country performance rating. These are our grouping for the concessionality. A means very concessional, grants. And C means less concessional, more of the upper middle income countries. And Reflecting those, we have various types of uh, projects, starting from grants to uh, ADF, which is more concessional, fixed term, uh, interest rate loans, and then to the uh, OCR loans. So this is the snapshot, snapshot of our lending portfolio and grants, of course. And you may have heard a lot about uh, new operating model. So in terms of the new operating model, uh, currently what our team is uh, managing is what we call, uh, what I indicated here, SGTRA projects. So for Central West, we have 20 projects uh, amounting to 4 billion. And East Asia, uh, China, Mongolia, we have eight projects. Oh no, six projects, uh, uh, 0 0.75 million, billion. But uh, in the planned day two, what we call the next phase of the new operating model, those who are, which are managed by resident missions, for example, like the China resident mission or the Central West resident missions, those are going to be also managed by uh, sector groups. So that's uh, what is envisaged, but uh, we are not sure what's coming. But including those uh, overall transport projects and the amounts in these regions are uh, 48 projects, uh, amounting to almost 9 billion uh, US dollars. And in our approach, uh, of course, we are aligning with the ADB's operational priorities, which is written in the strategy 2030. And the first, as Yuki also mentioned, is the climate shift. And this is very different, given the diverse nature of the countries. Uh, in more, I mean, more concessional or less developed countries, we have more uh, for the adaptation we try to enhance the resilience of the community, the region, or the infrastructure itself. But for more developed countries, like UMIC countries, uh, the extreme example may be People's Republic of China. We are trying to enhance more of the mitigation side as the regional or global public goods. So, Decarbonization, as Yuki mentioned, uh, model shift to rail and other less uh, emitting modes, and also smart mobility in urban areas. And the second pillar is the regional cooperation and integration. The overall, we have CAREC, Central Asia Regional Economic Corridor, uh, cooperation. And that doesn't include Armenia, but it, in, um, but it mostly covers the Central West and East Asia countries. And also there is a GMS, 
for which southern part of China, two provinces, one province and one autonomous region are included. So regional cooperation, of course, is uh, uh, one of our priorities. And the last is uh, livable cities, uh, BRT, bus rapid transit, or non-motorized transit. And also food security. Um, you may have heard it in the agriculture session, but this is more, more for the market access. And ADB made a big commitment for this. And we are supporting through the rural roles and the rural market development, those kind of uh, interventions. And the next is the alignment with the country context and needs. As I said, the, e, uh, the DMC's situations are very different. So depending on the country situation, we have tailor-made uh, capacity assessment, cap uh, capacity enhancement, and we need lots of consulting service for those. And we coordinate with development partners and co-financiers like World Bank, AIIB, and others. This is the list of the projects approved recently. So these are more for the opportunities for contract awards and this, I mean, uh, civil works and other contracts and also consulting services. Uh, I don't go one by one, but uh, we have some road projects, and also uh, we have two projects in China, PRC. And these are very much multi-sector, and it's not confined to transport sector. Uh, for example, this Heilongjiang Green Transformation, it includes urban re rejuvenation, rejuvenation, and also some uh, port uh, renovation, and border crossing points improvements. So those are the key uh, projects. And 2023, uh, we are already at the quarter four, but we are ambitiously trying to achieve those uh, approvals and commitments. And the first one, Afghanistan. Uh, it's may, it may be rare to hear Afghanistan intervention here. But we are trying to have one, uh, this claims and expenditure verification project. We are uh, co uh, partnering with the UN agency to verify the uh, amounts to be paid to the contractors and consul consultants, not to the government. So at the time when the uh, government was taken over, we had to stop all the operations, so we have to verify that. And also, we have road projects, border crossing point projects. Those are planned for this year. And next year, we have the phase two of the verification project. It's mostly for the payment. Uh, Phase one verifies and phase two pays. And some other rail and also the road projects. And rail project here is actually a policy-based loan for Georgia. So it's not for the contract opportunities, but we are addressing the policies of the government. And other uh, planned projects for next year, uh, Central West. Uh, and for uh, Mongolia, East Asia. We don't have any planned project for uh, 2024 in China. And these are TAs, uh, non-lending pipeline. Uh, the unit becomes thousands of dollars. So. Uh, smaller uh, interventions. But as I said, we have different needs for capacity enhancement, uh, project implementation support, uh, some value addition from ADB side. Those are incorporated in those. Sorry, I just skipped through those. And lastly, these are the key opportunities. Uh, this project is to be approved this year, uh, PARIP uh, Pari in Pakistan. We have large contract coming up, and also including the 
consulting service. And also Uzbekistan Rural Road and Mongolia Regional Road, which is already approved. Okay, lastly, uh, these are the growing needs for uh, which we expect from you. Um, we still have ports, airports, logistics, those infrastructure projects, of course, and smart mobility in BRT or non-motorized projects, uh, transport, those are very much expected. And as I said, climate shift is a large portion, and Paris alignment is required for everything. So those project design and gender enhancement, innovation, and sustainability. Those are very much requested. And lastly, this is the country focal. We have the, for each country, we have a focal person. So if you have anything uh, specific to any country, you can contact those emails and uh, we can be of your support. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, again, I, this time I will uh, talk about this Pacific cooperation and key opportunities. Yeah, this is very small, but I just show that uh, where we are working in the Pacific. And uh, this Pacific region operations covered 14 countries. As you see that the mostly the small island countries and the majority of them the fragile and conflict affected state. And due to this uniqueness, AD we developed a Pacific approach for five years, covering 2021 to 25. And it has three objectives, preparing for and responding to shocks, and also uh, delivering sustainable services, and supporting uh, inclusive growth. Among them, uh, this slide shows the focus area of the transport sectors. To deliver sustainable services, we focus on quality infrastructures aligned with Paris Agreement on Climate Change and safe, secure, and efficient connectivity improvement, promoting intermodal transport and use of ICT. To enhance climate and disaster resilience, we strengthen institutional capacity of each country or region as a whole to take timely and appropriate uh, measures in, in response to climate change and support them on disaster risk management to respond swiftly to disasters. Given the region's vulnerability uh, to sea level rises and frequent cyclones, we design a project in accordance with these focus areas in alignment with Paris Agreement. Well, this is a project approved uh, last year and uh, 2000, uh, this year to date, and we pro approved uh, four projects so far. As you can see, uh, three projects are on sea transport, and uh, one project is on air transport subsectors. And the first one is a Nauru port, and uh, the last one is a Tonga a port project. And these are additional financing to the uh, ongoing project. So the implementation period is shorter than other two projects. Usually our uh, standalone project uh, implementation period is uh, depend on size, but usually five to eight years. And in 2014, next year, uh, now uh, we already started working on the fire project for approval. The first three projects in Fiji, uh, Micronesia, and Papua New Guinea are the standalone project, and we need uh, new contract to be awarded for both consulting services and the civil works. And the Fiji project already issued invitation for PQ uh, last month, on 12 September, and uh, to close on 24th of October. And PNG and the Micronesia project, first two project, uses ADB's uh, project preparation facility, or we call it PRF. And the details engineering design will be prepared before as a project approval. The fourth project in this list is the land maritime connectivity project in Solomon Island. This is a tranche two of the land and maritime connectivity project, which was approved in 2021. 
And this project under the time slice scheme, that means almost all contract under this project has been awarded during the tranche one implementation. And this uh, SECA tranche two will uh, provide the financing to the ongoing contract based on the actual funding needs. And the last one is additional financing to the ongoing uh, additional financing to the uh, previous project, that means uh, that we finance only for the ongoing contract awarded in the previous project. And uh, this is a list of the 2005 and 2006 as of now, uh, but uh, this uh, approval amount and the timing are still very full because it depends on the project preparation and due diligence from now on. And this slide lists only a project we have been supporting preparation and some other new projects may come in later on. And the Kiribati, PNG, Samoa, Tonga, and Banat project in this list are being designed under ADB's PRL. And we expect the program action will start before ADB's project approval. Some uh, procurement opportunity may happen sometime next year. And the Solomon Project Transit 2, uh, similar to the Transit, uh, Transit 2, this Transit 3 will finance the remaining fund requirement of the ongoing contract. So the timing and amount of this Transit 3 loan will depend on the progress of the ongoing contract. Okay, this is a list of the non-lending pipeline. That means this is a technical assistance pipeline. The first three projects in Fiji, Micronesia, and Papua New Guinea will be processed together with a project in 2024 pipeline that I just explained. And the last two in PNG are for project preparation of the pipeline project in 2025 and 26. I just can't go back to the slide. And uh, this, oh, sorry, sorry, the other way. Okay, this 25, uh, 26, uh, these two PNG projects with this civil aviation development project phase three and the Trans Island Highway project. Uh, these, uh, we have the uh, technical assistance pipeline to prepare this project. And uh, in the first three projects in the TA pipeline is this, uh, attached to this three project, a critical bridge replacement project in the Fiji and the Sustainable Road Infrastructure Investment Project in Micronesia. And the third one is a Sustainable Highland Region Core Road Network Project in uh, PNG. Uh, this uh, uh, will be uh, supporting implementation or capacity development of the institutional uh, institution executing this project. This project. Then this, uh, we come back to these key opportunities and procurement consulting services. The table will show the key business opportunities on the ongoing and also the pipeline project. Of course, this list is not comprehensive and uh, just shows the sum uh, for the potential interest, interest by the international consultant and the potential bidders. And uh, all the details of the procurement plan are disclosed on NDB website in each, proje uh, each project site and we disclose a procurement plan once the concept, a project concept is approved by our management. Most of these project preparation are using ADB's PRF or maybe sometimes a previous phase project and the ADB has been closely working with executive agencies to finalize procurement packages and the bidding document. In The one is, is the Civil Aviation Development Investment Project 2. And the second one is the Sustainable Highland Region Core uh, Road Network Project. And uh, Micronesia is a Sustainable Road Infrastructure Investment Project. There are several packages uh, expected to be announced sometime next year. And in 25 and 26, uh, we expect uh, some uh, procurement action will be uh, started in Samoa, a land transport connectivity project, and Kiribati, outer island transport infrastructure investment project, project of phase two. 
This is similar to what uh, uh, Mr. Nishimura just explained, that we, in addition, in addition to the conventional needs of the expertises, we have growing demand for the cutting edge knowledges and expertises. And as I also explained in the previous presentation, we need the frontliners, ideas, and expertises in industry uh, to uh, design an innovative project. And uh, the, this, this is not a comprehensive list, it's just a fraction of the expertise, and uh, you may have the better idea that what uh, uh, expertise can be used in a project, so we appreciate your suggestion and uh, proposal. And uh, the last, uh, second one from the last, innovation. Uh, innovation is a very uh, broad concept, and uh, we, the, I just wanted to highlight that we need a, uh, some you know, uh, knowledge and exp uh, exp ex experiences to structure and implement innovative project. And these are uh, some example are the use of the green technology, and we, as, uh, we explained that uh, we are focusing on the climate financing, and the use of the green technology in our, uh, in our project are very uh, important, and uh, how the, we, we highly appreciate this kind of technology uh, to be incorporated in our, in our design, and also uh, green construction materials, and also some uh, new uh, construction methodology that will reduce the carbon uh, uh, CO2 emissions. Well, maybe soft side, uh, maybe we need uh, some expertise in sustainable operation and maintenance, like uh, implementable PPP scheme for transport infrastructure. We have been pursuing that uh, uh, good PPP scheme, but as you see, uh, we, we see the only uh, several cases of success, successful cases, so we also need some innovation on this kind of financing scheme. And this is the end of my presentation, Pacific Cooperation. And uh, as uh, uh, similar to the MASA, we have the uh, country focal for each country. And uh, this is uh, just a uh, list. And uh, probably, uh, for if you are interested in the further details, please contact uh, these uh, country focals. Actually, we are very uh, pleased to have the interactive consultation with you to develop our uh, project in an innovative way. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Shige Muramoto. I'm a PAU head uh, looking after the South Asia transport uh, project. I will introduce uh, South Asia transport uh, project which has a procurement opportunity in the future. Uh, just before that, uh, our regional strategy includes uh, these uh, four aspects. Uh, we were trying to uh, provide greater com uh, com uh, connectivity uh, in the region and also in, in within the country. Uh, connecting to, to from the farm to the market or the municipal uh, city to city or country to country uh, regional cooperation you may heard of uh, south asia sub-regional economic cooperation sasec uh, this is our sort of a brand for uh, connecting uh, the south asian countries and also yeah of course we were aiming at the inclusive uh, growthness uh, including elderly, the women, the gen, uh, socially uh, weak people in the development. And of course, we are trying to achieve the sustainability uh, of our project itself with the environmental concern and the social concern and others. But overall, in doing project, uh, we highly uh, uh, trying to do the project readiness, uh, as Sakai-san mentioned earlier. Uh, what do you mean by project readiness? Uh, this means that uh, we are trying to uh, contract of the So when you hear about the uh, loan approval on the media, uh, it the uh, business opportunity is already done, hopefully. Uh, so in parallel to preparation of the loans, uh, we 
uh, prepare uh, we, the ex our executing agency is doing the procurement already because the procurement uh, it takes some time uh, for the small uh, works contract it may take six months uh, in uh, faster countries some country take uh, uh, over one year uh, to reach conclusion on the uh, in the bidding uh, for more than one year so we trying to uh, uh, expedite the procurement as fast as possible and also the consultant selection. So uh, the project will be highly ready uh, by the time of our approval. Uh, now I listed the project uh, which has still an opportunity for the project. The first one, uh, so for 2022 and uh, 23, these are the only remaining uh, project which has a uh, business opportunity. The first one is the Bangladesh Trade Facilitation Project. Uh, this project is to develop a, a border facility in the 20 some places along the, the Bangladesh, uh, which is surrounded by India. And uh, yeah, this we have uh, many uh, works coming up and consultant selection, uh, consultant opportunities there. Uh, second one, uh, yeah, sorry, the Bihar Road Project. This is to develop uh, Bihar National Highways. And in the pipeline, uh, second integrated, oh, actually this, uh, yeah, yeah, in Sri Lanka. This is the rural road project in Sri Lanka. Uh, for the MFF Tranche 4, uh, as you know that the Sri Lanka is in the economic crisis. So this is the uh, MF plus tranche of the MFF project to cross the, the, the investment program. Uh, 2024 onward, these are the, uh, the project. Uh, Dhaka Metro Line 5 South uh, is coming in a big wave. Uh, this, it says that the $300 uh, million loan, but this is only the first tranche. Uh, this uh, MFF is, I think it's uh, nearly $2 billion. And this is a time-sliced uh, MFF, meaning that the contract uh, will be awarded in the first tranche, but uh, subsequent uh, tranches will f continue financing. So the each, each package is quite big. Um, consultant Super construction supervision consultant, the amount is over 100 million in the estimated amount. And we have uh, uh, viaduct works or the underground works uh, very, and uh, 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 electrical and mechanical and uh, other signaling, other packages. Uh, Sasek Chetukon Port Access Road project is also coming up. Uh, I think the bidding will start very soon. One uniqueness of this project is that uh, the government is using single stage, single envelope for 100, over 100 million uh, works contract. This, I think, is the, the first time that the government, uh, Bangladesh government uh, used the one envelope uh, uh, bidding for the large works. So I'm quite excited what would happen to this because the, actually the Bangladesh procurement is taking long time. And uh, all of those uh, large works has been bid out by uh, two envelope systems. So technical and financial envelope uh, separately evaluated and which is one of the reasons it takes a long, long time uh, for the bidding. So this will be a very interesting one. And uh, another one, uh, Sasek project is Chittagong Dehazari Dual Gauge project. This is the project for Bangladesh Railway. Uh, this is the uh, Bangladesh Railway project is Sasek Dehazaram Inland Container Depots. Uh, this is also coming up next year, hopefully. Um, in India, we have a second line of a daily uh, regional rapid transit system uh, we're coming up uh, as a MFF uh, project, uh, Tranche 1. Uh, this is a second line coming from Delhi to southern 
uh, three cities. Uh, the first one we are now implementing is to Delhi to Muret, uh, which is being implemented quite well. And you uh, must, uh, some, many of you have heard of from uh, NCRTC uh, staff this morning. And uh, other projects are coming up for Impa Ring Road project, uh, Indoor Metro, Nagpur Metro, and Nasik Metro. So we have a uh, uh, growing number of metro projects in India, uh, but still, we still have some uh, road project. Uh, some more 2021 uh, pipeline project. Uh, the first one uh, is the Bangladesh phase two of the trade facilitation project. Uh, another uh, Bangladesh railway project, Raksam to Chittagong dual gauge project is also coming up. Uh, Chennai Metro Tranche 2, I'm not quite sure if uh, this has a uh, uh, business opportunity uh, because that this is also a time slice uh, MFF. Uh, Sikkim major project, uh, major district road project is coming up. Uh, the bidding may start early uh, next year. We are discussing the procurement packages with the executing agency. Uh, and uh, we have a uh, development of best in class transport infrastructure in India and also sustainable urban e mobility project. This may be. Uh, Lots of electric buses may be procured. Uh, going to uh, technical assistant uh, project, many of the, these TAs are attached to the loan or the grant project uh, to mainly uh, uh, improve the capacity of the existing agency and some uh, project uh, preparation. Um, so Bangladesh, we have the supporting enhanced urban mobility and liability in Dhaka. Uh, we have a Sasek Dhaka Inland Waterway project. Uh, this is, is, will be a project preparation. Chittagong Urban Mobility Study, uh, cross-border trade facilitation project. This is attached to the uh, trade facilitation project that I uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, transport modal shift facilitation study and uh, preparing national highway expansion development project in Bhutan is also coming. Uh, Samoa TAs in 2014 to 2015, uh, Sikkim major project, uh, this is attached to the loan uh, for capacity building. Uh, the next one also a capacity building, these, these are all uh, attached to the loan project. Uh, Manipur Road Project, uh, this is also attached to the Impa Ring Road Project, I guess. Uh, strengthening capacity of design and implement transport infrastructure in India, study connectivity in India, logistic uh, uh, policy-based loan is also coming up. And some more project is coming. Um, I think this, this slide will be distributed, uh, and my time is limited. <laughs> so, um, what uh, I would appreciate from, uh, I understand many of you are consultant. Uh, we are always uh, uh, pushed by the government for finance plus, uh, which means that uh, not only fi providing fund, but uh, government wants uh, something we will highly appreciate. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon. I am Vitun Tawisuk. Uh, representing uh, Southeast Asia Transport Group for uh, today's session. Um, in, in Southeast Asia, we have 11 uh, 
uh, developing member countries, actually just 11 member countries, were uh, Singapore, Malaysia, and uh, Brunei. They are, they are rich countries, so basically they're not borrowing anymore. So we have only um, eight countries who are still active. So uh, basically the needs of this country, the key focus of this country uh, is each country is they are different, basically. Uh, basically. Cambodia, countries like Cambodia, they, need, they still need almost everything. So Indonesia, they need um, um, the development in the remote area and the railway system. And uh, Laos, basically, they, they, they need almost everything except railway, but the uh, Situation nowadays, probably they're not moving anywhere for a while. Uh, Myanmar also frozen. Basically, they need everything, but uh, no movement. Um, Philippines, of course, you know this is probably the biggest uh, action going on in the country, uh, following Mr. Uh, the President uh, Duterte's uh, previous build, build, build programs. So. Uh, a large number of opportunities there, and also uh, the current president, uh, President Marcos, also uh, pushing very hard for his uh, build better, more programs. So basically, just a continuation of this build, build, build program. So we expect uh, a lot of opportunities. Basically, in the whole uh, Southeast Asia region, it's mainly concentrated in the Philippines. So Thailand, we have um, there's the, uh, one ongoing project now being um, processed. So uh, basically, they are focusing on uh, still um, some connect some connection and then railway improvements, some road connection, a small small section, uh, uh, tunneling may come also. And Timor Leste, of course, they need everything except railway. So it's too small for having railway for that. Um, uh, Vietnam, they also still need everything. Um, but we have two uh, metro projects going on, but uh, moving very slow also in Vietnam. Uh, the approved projects for 2022 and 23. Actually, 22 we approve a big railway project uh, for 1.75 billion. The Morales Clark um, railway project, and that's only ADB financing. Actually, Jai Ka is also financing a big part of it. Um, and the, for the, the 2023, we also approve another. Uh, one billion for the first trans of the, oh, sorry, sorry, I mistake. Uh, the South, Com South Commuter Railway was uh, for 2022 for 1.75 uh, billion. And uh, uh, 2023, this year, we approved the Bow Bus Project for one, uh, 1 1.01 billion dollars. And we expect to approve um, the Batan Kawite Link Bridge project this year, but this is subject to the government internal approval, which, uh, if approved, uh, the whole program is going to be 2.65 billion for ADB financing and another around 1.2-1.3 billion from the uh, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank of uh, China. So uh, if it doesn't um, get approved this year, it will slip to the first or second quarter of next year. But there's uh, also a lot of opportunities in this project. Um, <coughs> the pipelines for 2024, of course, we have two projects in Indonesia. I will not read out everything, but um, in the end, we will share this uh, PowerPoint with you guys. So um, uh, I think you have all the information presented here. 
So I'll just go quickly because there are just uh, too many pages of this thing. Um, we have uh, three projects for uh, Philippines. I think this Laguna Lake Shore will not come uh, 2024. I think we, we, <coughs> we need to slow it down for some technical reason, but uh, we are in a, a discussion with the government. And the Morolos Park Railway is the continuation of the, um, the previous one that was approved in 2020. Then um, the MRT4, uh, that is another $1 billion of this uh, urban, metro, uh, urban railway. Then 2025-26, uh, we have some in Cambodia, Cambodia and Laos, small project, and um, <coughs> Thailand for another $150 million. Uh, hopefully, that happens. Uh, then uh, expect uh, some big uh, program in Vietnam. Hopefully, those three projects uh, will uh, happen. Uh, <clears throat> okay, some TAs we have Indonesia, Laos, Philippines, uh, Thailand, and Timor Leste. And uh, let's shift to the key uh, opportunities. Uh, Cambodia in 2024-25, um, we expect to have uh, say some consultancies, some consultancy service for uh, detailed design and uh, civil works. And uh, for the Bataan Kavite Interlink Bridge project, if it's approved in 2023 or early 24, we should be able to advertise. Uh, so this. Sorry, I think this, this PowerPoint is a bit uh, not updated, but I think these activities will happen mostly in 2024 uh, or maybe early 25, but uh, we try to get the project approved by uh, early next year. Then the big consultancy service contract, which uh, in total is going to be something uh, 100 plus uh, million dollars. I, I, I think you need, a, uh, you need to form a, a big consortium for that. And the civil works, we have about, uh, say, 3.4 billion in total. And then we have the, um, uh, some contracts to be awarded in Metro Manila project. And now we're just trying to get the issue sorted out uh, uh, between the government's <laughs> authorities because the department are just uh, trying to, trying to uh, communicate better with the local authorities to get the procurement going. Uh, if it comes, yeah, there'll be, there'll be uh, uh, three contracts to be awarded and uh, one small uh, O&M capacity building to be uh, advertised. Uh, then we have the... Um, MRT4, if the project gets approved by um, next year, then uh, this procurement is being uh, prepared at the moment, so ho hopefully they, they can advertise uh, next year. There'll be a big uh, consultancy service contract, $60 million for construction supervision. <coughs> and. Um, some, there is, um, okay, this is the ongoing projects actually, the uh, emergency loan and the ESA Greenway. We have all this uh, civil work to be uh, advertised uh, early next year, hopefully. Then we have, this, this is a big program actually, the, we call it uh, IPIF. Uh, it's a facility for preparing detailed design and um, some feasibility studies for the future projects. Actually, Bataan Kavite, the, the um, 
and uh, this Laguna Lake Shaw also were prepared under this uh, IPIF, but this is already the third uh, uh, loan for the IPIF that uh, we have a, a long list of uh, projects to be, these are all consultancy services, actually $200 million under this uh, facility. So we have the small package, big packages for feasibility study, detailed design, uh, some railways, some roads, yeah. um, and some yeah, rural development also. So for Thailand, we have uh, one project expected to be approved uh, next year, and uh, consultancy service for supervision is about $4 million. For Timor-Leste also, it, this project has been pending approval for some time. It's up to the government now. For, for, from ADB side, we are ready. And uh, the consultancy service will be $6 million for uh, supervision. So uh, Vietnam, we also have uh, some um, consultancy service for uh, 1.5 million for feasibility study of the uh, provincial roads. And then we have this tunneling project supposed to be uh, civil work contract. I think that's very much the opportunity for the Southeast Asia. And, uh, yeah, for the uh, growing needs, basically railway is one thing that, sorry, I forgot to update this PowerPoint sheet. Uh, and we have port, airport. Uh, smart mobility is new for us. Also in the Philippines, we have this ESA Greenway, which is basically the uh, elevated uh, walkway along the uh, ESA, ESA Highway. And uh, this is new. Actually, I think the government will, will, will try to build more in, in the, uh, Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam, particularly in the, in the urban area. And the climate change, you know, uh, climate resilient infrastructure is becoming more and more important. Gender equality is there. Uh, the Paris Agreement is becoming uh, important for ADB, so we, we usually require the project to be uh, aligned with the Paris Agreement. Uh, I think that's very much it. So we, lastly, we have uh, eight people whom you can, con who you can contact as our country focus. Uh, you have their email address by when we share this uh, PowerPoint and uh, Please feel free to reach them. Okay. Thank you very much for this listening. Okay, I see the most popular slide by version by uh, looking at how many phones went in the air was the country focus. Uh, so I think they may be getting some emails. Okay, we're, we're almost out of time, but I want to allow uh, for some questions from the floor. There are two microphones set up, uh, one on the right as you look at it, one on the left as you look at it. And if you have any questions, please stand up, uh, approach the microphone. Let us know if your question is about consulting or, or about contracting, and if there's a specific geographic area that you're interested in, or if it's just a general question, and then we'll answer it. A quick straw poll. Um, how many in the room are consulting firms? Can you just put, give a show of hands? OK, thank you. Contractors? OK, thank you. Others? A few. OK, good. All right, so you know what, what we've seen there is there are a lot of opportunities um, right across the region. I hope you're relatively energized by that. A few messages that I would just give, uh, you know, higher, higher level ones. Advanced contracting, be aware of that terminology. That is opportunities going to the market before the ADB board has approved the project. So if you saw projects there going for approval in 2024, particularly in certain regions, there is a high likelihood they're already on the market. So you perhaps need to be looking a small bit further forward if you haven't already got those on your radar. Uh, an example there of 2024 is in Fiji, there was a bridges project shown. The pre-qualification actually got advertised for that two weeks ago, even though the project itself will not be, uh, a w will not be approved until 2024. So opportunities happen well in advance, and that also goes for some of the technical assistance opportunities. 
if, you're in, if you see projects there that are going for implementation in 2024, you can reasonably assume that technical assistance for those has really all of the opportunities are already advertised. Technical assistance normally comes about 18 months ahead of project approval. So just be aware again on, on timelines. And finally, uh, health warnings on the figures you will have seen. For projects that are not approved, those values are subject to ADB board approval. And for projects that are into, let's say, 2025, 2026, those are subject sometimes to substantial change. Uh, so just a health warning on those figures. So, okay, questions. Don't all rush to the microphones. Are there any questions on the floor? Perfect. Can you please just go to the microphone? Thank you. Thank you very much for a comprehensive uh, presentation. My concern is the uh, project readiness. So as soon as the project is loan sign project is effective and then the startup uh, consulting team check in and the readiness my, uh, my finding is the project startup consulting team usually project usually implementing the project and then another consulting team implementation consultant okay loan implementation consultant LSC coming in and then uh, they're overlapping sometime. And then uh, the, the loan implementation consulting team is started to learn again, you know. Actually, the project readiness, the startup consulting team is already implementing the project. My view is they can continue to implement the project with not, not, uh, not, uh, uh, not many problems. So my question is, why just recruit the startup consulting team and then just continue to implement the projects? What's wrong with the ADB? And you know, two consulting teams in the beginning and then another consulting team come again, you know, uh, or some projects that you know, uh, you can recruit individual consultant for management, just for management and procurement, individual consultant in the beginning, as soon as loan effective and then you can recruit individually, easily, the uh, project management consultant and the procurement and start to work the project. And then for the project implements, implementation for the project components, that management can recruit consulting firm or NGO or something, you know, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, they can recruit, you know, the consulting teams as required. And these kinds of arrangements can... Okay. Okay, accelerate I, the can, uh, project excuse me, implementation. Sorry, so can, that is my question. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Just, just in the interest of time. Uh, one thing to, to just remember in terms of continuity through the entire process is that there are different forms of financing used. So at processing stage, it is uh, technical assistance financing where ADB is the employer. And in implementation stage, there is the loan and grant financing where the government is the employer. So having, uh, and both employers have different requirements, have different conditions of contract, have different governing laws uh, that, that govern the contract. So it is very difficult to, let's say, have a consultant who is brought in for a feasibility stage of a project and then directly award them the implementation stage uh, activities. There may also be cases where the experience that is needed at the different stages differs. Um, so therefore, you know, who you may need to do a feasibility study may not be as strong in the detailed design or may not be as strong in the construction supervision. What I will say to you is that the approach of having consistency through is not forbidden within our rules. It is possible. Uh, it needs to be justified. There needs to be a logical reason to do it. And it is done in some parts uh, of, of the world. In the Pacific, it has been done where it has been retained through uh, from start to finish. So it is possible. Um, but there is not one standard approach, uh, and everything is looked at on its individual merits. And if there is a logic to retaining a firm through the project, and borrowers wish to do that, because again, and I emphasize this this morning in the plenary, ADB is not the owner of the entire process from start to finish. Uh, a firm that ADB may wish to bring in for a feasibility study may not be a firm that a government is willing to bring in for the later stages. So I suppose I'll wrap it up by saying, it is much more complex uh, and it is not as simple as, as, as it may seem. There are a lot of different considerations that need to take place 
uh, but it is not prohibited under ADB's procurement policy. Thank you. Any other questions from the floor? Yes, please. And we will, for those who are thirsty or hungry, uh, we will wrap up uh, maybe one more question after this, and then we will wrap up. Thank you. Hi. Good evening. This is Cherry, Chiquibo Construction, uh, Philippines. Uh, I would just like to know in regards to the uh, bidding process. So uh, it's actually normal right now. In the time is normal right now, right? There's no more COVID. So in regards to notice of award, to notice to proceed to uh, um, putting money in as, you, as a financer, ADB, it goes, for example, to DOTR, right? So what are the timelines of that? From notice of award, notice to proceed, not, and implementation. Okay, thank you. Vatun, maybe I'll ask you to pick up on this from a Southeast Asia slash Philippines perspective. Thank you. It should be on. Yes, I think it, 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 it depends on the government, basically. The government is the owner of the project. You know. um, of course, you know, they will need time to, to, to uh, carry out their, their administration need. And I think they would, they would, they would uh, indicate in advance that uh, how long it will take, or you can actually uh, ask them directly. Okay. Because yeah. sometimes it's too long for them to give the money. <laughs> it's already to, with them and the contractor is still waiting for one year. Yeah, everybody complains that, especially Philippines. That, that, that's pretty normal. I know, <laughs> so, so they know, you know. <laughs> the, I, mean, I hope you, as a financer, can talk to the government of the Philippines, DOTR. I have been trying since uh, five, six years back. It didn't change. <laughs> then give an ultimatum to them. Don't give them the money. <laughs> I, I won't give up, but uh, I also don't expect it. they will easily change. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, please. Hello, uh, I'm from CEG. Uh, it's very pleasing to see the progress in terms of Paris Agreement being integrated into the transport projects that you expedite. Um, to what extent are the transport projects contributing to the NDCs, to the various nationalities that are being implemented. And do you think there's a room for much more improved benchmarking of progress towards uh, NDCs and Paris Agreement? Thank you very much. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Actually, this is a very, very uh, good question. And uh, yeah, as I said, that uh, uh, we, all, all the project we approve after July uh, this year should be Paris, uh, agree, aligned with Paris Agreement. And for that, uh, we, have to, we have the due diligence process, whether this project is uh, aligned with the Paris Agreement or not. As you rightly mentioned, that uh, we also see this uh, project in line with NDC of each recipient countries. And uh, yeah, and the methodology you mentioned that uh, uh, there are various ways and uh, we still in undergoing our process, standardized kind of you know, due diligence process. Mm -hmm. And uh, as of now, uh, we are now doing one by one. And uh, actually, we also need your kind of you know, advice and also expertise to you know, establish uh, kind of the efficient way and, and not too much burden to the government and also the facilitate our project preparation. But ensuring that our project are aligned with the Paris Agreement. Really appreciate your advice also. Thank you. Okay. Any final questions? If not, that is a great segue into reminding everyone that there, the first session tomorrow morning is on climate change and sustainable procurement, uh, where we will have uh, some expert speakers, uh, a sort of a plenary panel discussion on that specific topic. So I uh, look forward to seeing you all there. Okay, with that, I will thank my four speakers uh, for providing the information today. The presentations will be uh, disseminated after the event. I hope that you had a productive first day at the Business Opportunities Fair with our first one since 2019. 
I hope that you enjoy the networking opportunities this evening, and we'll see you all back here in the floor, uh, bright and fresh, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Thanks a lot, everyone.